Akriti. I am the teaching assistant for commercial real estate at the University of Central Florida. And this exercise, we're going to calculate the before tax cash flow, this row down here for this problem. In this problem, we were looking to purchase an office building for the purchase price of $12 million with a hold period of five years and a discount rate of 12%. We're going to calculate the entry cap rate. We're given the rent roll. The office currently is uh, 41,650 square feet leased, and there are 189 units rented for parking. The total office area is 46,250, and the total parking is 210. We were told that the office rent is increasing at 1.5% annually, and the parking rent is increasing at 1.5% annually as well. From an expense perspective, we were told that management fee was 4% of EGI. The real estate tax is $34,000 a year for the first year, and it's increasing at a 3% rate annually. Hazard insurance, we were given that information, maintenance and supply, I'm sorry, maintenance and repair, supplies, capital replacements allowance, administrative costs, operating costs of the garage. And the important thing is that expenses are increasing at a 2% rate annually. From a financing perspective, when we reach out to the lender, we were quoted an interest rate of 4.25%, amortization of 25 year and a term of 25 years, which means that the uh, this is a fully amortized loan. The loan amount will be $7,355,000. We were asked to calculate the LTV. The lender cost was 1%. We have to calculate the actual amount of that. We have to calculate the monthly payment and to get to the annual payment. Lastly, we're going to calculate, of course, we have the purchase price, which is simply the purchase price that was given to us. We have to calculate the loan cost, which is the lender cost information here. The debt amount, which has also been given to us, this is this information here. But we are asked to calculate the initial investment. We can't get to there until we calculate the annual payment and so forth. So to start the process, I'm gonna start with the rent roll. We're asked to calculate the office vacancy. The office vacancy is simply gonna be equal to one minus the occupancy of the office, which is simply the current space rented over the total space for the office, which would give us the office vacancy of 9.9%. The parking vacancy is the same formula, one minus the current parking space rented, 189 units over the total a number of units in the, on the property, which is 210, which gives us the parking vacancy of 10%. We're gonna move over to the financing information to calculate the monthly payment and then on to the annual payment and of course the lender points or costs. The monthly payment is calculated using the payment function. And to do so, we just simply put equal payment, the rate divided by 12, in the uh, number of periods times 12 to get the total monthly payment, the total payment, and the previous value, which is the loan amount, and zero to get the monthly payment. The monthly payment then is $39,845. To calculate the annual payment, we simply multiply the monthly payment times 12. And the lender cost is simply the loan amount times the lender points, which will give us $73,550. And the lender cost is simply this. We're gonna go ahead and equal that. So now we have the information up here. Of course, to calculate the initial investment is simply going to be the purchase price plus the lender cost minus the debt. Our initial investment is gonna be Four million seven hundred and eighteen dollars and uh, 
$718,550 for our initial investment. We're going to calculate the cap, entry cap rate after we calculate the first year NOI. To begin the process to calculate the annual cash flow, we're going to start with the office um, PGI. Okay, Office PGI is simply going to be the square footage times the maximum at maximum capacity. This is going to give us the office PGI. It's going to do the same thing for the parking times 210. So this gives us the first year um, office and parking PGI. To calculate years two through six, we're going to use a simple formula. The previous year's PGI times one plus the growth rate. So we have equal previous year's PGI times one plus the growth rate. And we were told that the uh, office is increasing at 1.5% 1. 1. annually. And we're gonna anchor that since we're going to drag it across to years through through six. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it across to get the total PGI for office for years two through six. The formula is the same for parking. It's the previous years times one plus the growth rate, which is also 1.5, and we're gonna anchor it as well to get the amount for years two through six. And we're gonna drag it across from years two through six. Now, to calculate the total PGI is going to be the sum of both office and parking. We're gonna drag it across since the formula is the same. Next, we're going to calculate the vacancy and loss. It's important to keep in mind that vacancy and loss is an expense, so we're going to make those numbers a negative number. We're going to um, equal. We were told that uh, vacancy. We know that vacancy and loss is a percentage of uh, PGI. Okay, so it's going to be for office. It's going to be year one times the vacancy and loss for office, which is here. But we're going to anchor that so we can drag it across. But we're going to make sure, remember to make this a negative number. And we're going to drag it across. And the vacancy and loss for parking is the same thing. Equal the negative number of parking times the vacancy and loss for parking. And we're going to anchor it. I'm going to drag it across. The total vacancy and loss is going to be the sum of vacancy and loss for office and parking. I'm going to drag it across since the formula is the same. Next, we're going to calculate EGI. EGI is simply going to be total PGI minus total vacancy and loss. It's going to be the sum of Total PGI and the, the total vacancy and loss. And so our EGI for year one is 1,230,936. Since the formula is the same, we're going to drag it across to year six. Next, we're going to calculate the OPEX. Remember, we were told that management fee is at 4% up here. And so management fee is a percentage of EGI. We know it's 4%. We're going to say, it, since it is a negative number, we're going to make sure we put the negative sign in front of it. It's a percentage of EGI, and we are going to find the 4% management fee. And we're going to anchor it so we can use it across. And so our management fee does not change, and there's no growth rate for it. We're going to drag it across to get the management fee for years two through six. Next, next we're going to calculate the real estate taxes. Year one, it was given to us. Year one is simply going to be real estate tax was 34,000. It's going to say negative equal, I'm sorry, equal negative $34,000. We're going to do the same. We're going to follow the same step for the other expenses, which is hazard insurance. 
equal negative 6,525. We're going to do the same thing for maintenance and repair. We're going to do the same thing for supplies. We're going to do the same thing for administrative costs. We're going to do the same thing for sure. Same thing for garage operating expense equal negative 12,925. Now the total OPEX is the sum of all of these operating expenses for years one through for, for the first year. But we have not calculated the capital expenditure, which is um, also here as well. We're going to put that separately. The It's also an expense. Capital replacement is going to be 29530 Okay. Now for years two through six for real estate taxes on down, we were told that these expenses are increasing at a rate of 2%. So the formula for that is simply going to be the year one expense times one plus the growth rate. So we're going to do year one expense times one plus the growth rate of 2%. But we're going to anchor that. Remember to do that. If we do that, we see that the year two cash uh, year two real estate taxes, I'm sorry, year two, uh, year two real estate taxes is increasing. Actually, real estate taxes is actually increasing at 3%. I apologize. It is at 3%. So we're going to move that one to here, 3%. And we're going to drag it across. Real estate taxes is the only one that's increasing at a different rate. Okay. Um, so uh, hazard insurance is actually increasing at 2%. So it's going to be equal to previous years times 1 plus the growth rate. The growth rate, again, is 2%, unlike the real estate taxes, which was increasing at a rate of 3%. I'm going to anchor that, and we're going to drag it across. And we're going to do the same thing for maintenance and repair equal previous year times one plus the growth rate anchored. And we're going to get 22,568. We're going to drag it across for supply and demand. I'm sorry, for supply, it's going to be one plus the growth rate of 2% anchored. We're going to drag it across for years two through six. For administrative costs, we're going to do the same, follow the same process. One plus the growth rate of 2%. We're gonna anchor that. And we're going to drag it across the years six for garage costs, operating costs for garage, follow the same process times one plus the growth rate anchored. We're going to close that up and we're going to drag it across. Now the total OPEX, since it is just a formula we use for, um, year one is a sum of the all of these expenses we can drag it across to get the total opex now capital uh replacement uh we're gonna do the same thing for it it is also increasing at a two percent increase annually we're going to do capital times one plus the growth rate of two percent we're going to close that out and we're going to drag it across to get years two through six. Now the operate net operating income is going to be the sum of EGI total OPEX and CAPEX. So we're going to say equal sum of EGI comma OPEX comma CAPEX. 
we have $1,058,721. Since the formula is the same, we can drag it across to years six. And then the debt service, the debt service is simply the annual debt service when we calculated it up here, which is $478,138. And this one, we're gonna uh, anchor that because we're gonna drag it across because it's the same every year. Okay, we're gonna drag it across because our debt service will not change. And we stop the annual debt service at year five since we the holding period is five, although we calculated the NOI through year six for the um, to count to be able to calculate the exit cap rate, we do not need to drag and calculate the NOI uh, for more than the holding period. Now, the before tax cash flow is very simple to calculate. Now, it's going to be the sum, equal sum of the NOI and the debt service. And you have uh, drag it across. And you have your before tax cash flow for years one through five. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please reach out to me or comment on the video. Until next time. Thank you.